G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in last week's video, I briefly showed you that my Neolamprologus tetrathopalus had spawned. And also in that video, I showed you a little fry hatchery that I built to grow the wriggling newly hatched fry into free swimming fry. And I thought today I would show you a video on their progression, a day by day progress of how they've developed from newly hatched wriggling fry to free swimming fry. But before we get into today's video, I thought I'd quickly mention that it has been exactly one year to the day with the publication of this video since I launched my YouTube channel. I really didn't think that it would become what it has. It's a bit of work to commit to even just weekly videos, let alone daily videos. And I am amazed that there are channels out there that can commit to daily videos, to making daily content. That's just amazing because <laughs> I find myself struggling to make weekly content. But I really started to commit to making weekly content around November, December 2019. And since then I've noticed that the channel has grown and now I'm almost at 400 subscribers. So thank you to each and every one of you. It really means a lot to me that you are subscribed to my channel and you guys really do motivate me to continue to make informative content and I hope entertaining content for you guys to enjoy. But anyway guys, it's gone quickly. I can't believe it's already been a year since I started the channel and I thought I'd just quickly mention that to you guys. So there you go. Okay guys, let's get straight into the video and I'll show you what I've done. Okay, so the quick backstory with these fish, with my trets. If you want the f more detail about it, you can watch the video here. Otherwise, quick rundown is my breeding pair, and they like to spawn on the sand bed. So the problem with them spawning on the sand bed is the sand rolls back down into their cave. They pick up sand along with eggs and spit them out and the eggs all end up within the sand bed. Obviously they're going to die. It's the second time that they spawn on the sand bed. This time that they spawn, I decided to pull the fry out. All the fry was situated underneath the cave here and I had to get them out because the male wouldn't be able to look after them with the Coenga golds in here. Now the way I got the fry out from underneath that cave, obviously you can't use a net and you're not going to move that cave because all that sand would just cover the fry. So I use airline hose and suck the fry out using a siphon. Now this tank is two foot deep so I need at least four foot of airline hose to do this part of the process. So start a siphon out, I use a clamp just to loosely hold this airline hose into my container. You can use any container you want, the larger probably the better because you can siphon out for longer. Now as you're siphoning, do your best not to siphon out any of the gravel or sand and what you can do is because the fry are a lot lighter than the gravel, you can hover the airline hose above where the fry are and they should come up into the airline hose. They should be sucked up before the gravel is because the gravel is obviously heavier. It's inevitable that the deeper that the fry are in this cave, it's going to be harder to get them so you will be sucking up some of the sand, some of the gravel. But in the second process of getting them out of this container and into the egg hatchery, you're able to separate them a lot easier. So just start a siphon, suck the fry out into your first container, and then we'll go on to the next step. Okay guys, the fry is in this container, and there is the fry there by himself. You can see him beating away the little guy. Up on the ladder now, I've elevated the container a little bit so I can start a siphon a little easier into this egg hatchery. Okay, so I've also positioned the fry in a place where I know it is in the container. It's about here where my finger is, and it's away from all the substrate that I've sucked up in that container. So I know I'm not gonna suck up any substrate. Now, the process for putting the fry from here, getting the fry from there into the egg hatchery is pretty simple. I'm gonna take the air stone out. The next part is to take the sponge out. So I'm just sliding this up, and you can see it's held in place by this piece of slate. This piece of slate is perfect. It's got a very flat bottom. So all I'm doing is taking this piece out there we go it's out of the water so if they were to swim up they won't swim out out of the container now this is going to be very difficult for me to do one-handed so i'm going to have to switch you guys off and i'm going to basically start another siphon suck the fry up into here and that's it fries in and then i'll show you what i do to restart the egg hatchery and i'll also quickly show you what these little sponges are these are just little sponges that you can buy off ebay for covering your inlets of your hang on back power filters so they've got a hole in the middle here and it's capped off at this end so the hole doesn't go all the way through so this is perfect for this as well because they just happen to be the same size as my gravel vac. Because they've got the hole in the middle, the air stone can get closer to the fry and create that current, that uplift current through the tube, which is what you want. This end, this has it as well, and the hole is up this way. So the fry is sitting on about that much sponge, really. So water flow is, is really good. It's coming up through the um, pantyhose, up past them, 
and out. So I'm just gonna pop this in now, pop it on there, and then there's an air bubble on that. Let me get that out. Air bubble out, as you can see. So I'm just gonna push this down. So I'm just pushing it down slowly because I don't, this is pushing water down onto them. And I'm just closing the gap a little bit. There we go, that should be enough. So you can see how far up it is and how much gap they've got. If you lower the gap more, you're putting the airline closer to them and there's gonna be stronger current going through this. You don't wanna tire them out, so it's just a fine balance. I'm gonna have it about there. So now, get the airline hose with the air stone and I'm just gonna pop it into the middle of that sponge. So it's all the way down now. Now we're not finished yet. Notice that this egg hatchery is above the water surface. The edge is still above the water surface. And you can see the fry is still looking like there's no flow going through the tank. Once I lower this down, you'll see that the fry will start to basically look like they're standing on their heads. So I'm just gonna lower it down now. There we go. See how the fry look like they're standing on their heads now? That's because the water's flying all the way through and out able to get out of the container now and now you know you maximize your flow flows going in for the bottom flowing up past the fry giving them oxygenated water and out the top if you have this sticking up like this out of the out of the water you won't get that flow and they'll lie back down again so you need that flow so just do that a little bit in the water like that and the fry will stand up on their heads basically and um, flow will be good enough, sufficient enough to provide them with oxygenated water. So that's all there is to it really. Very simple design, very easy to make. The other thing you also want to do is if you do suck up gravel in your container, double check that you haven't inadvertently sucked up any fry that you didn't notice that you had. So guys, you might be wondering how are the fry not getting blown around in this and all appear to be standing on their heads. Well, basically cichlid fry, when they're first born, have sticky adhesive glands on their head. And this is how they don't get swept away by current or by their parents fanning the eggs when they're at this age. So at the moment, they're using that gland that's preventing them from being blown around in this thing. They will have this gland, this sticky gland on their head for a number of days until they absorb that yolk sac. But that's why they look like they're all standing on their head. About 24 hours after I've put them in this, they're all doing well. There's now 32 in here. I've found one more egg that had hatched overnight. So I am hopeful that they're gonna survive. You can see they've got their little tails there, wiggling away. Interesting to see how they progress over the next few days. This is day two. So they've been in this for 48 hours now. I just put the flash on the camera and they kind of stopped jiggling around. So I'm not gonna keep this on for too long. You can see they've got eyes. This is day three of my tret hatchery guys. Going really well, developing up. All wiggling away there. Day four, still developing into fish. <laughs> They're doing that little transformation, little metamorphosis. Day five, this little update with my tret fry. They're really developing now. Still got that little sticky membrane on their head. See, they must be excreting into the container absorbing that yolk sac and i think in the next day or two i'm gonna have to feed them some baby brine shrimp they'll be free swimming hopefully so guys it's day six of hatching my neolamprologus touch the palus fry and you can see they're free swimming now and i've just given them their first feed which was live microworms you can see they're very active in there Day seven, I've just turned the lights on so they are a little bit shell-shocked. So I'm gonna give them their second feeding now and I might let them out of this container tomorrow. Look at those little guys. So there you have it guys, the egg hatchery worked and all the fry free swimming now. I'm gonna pop them into the tank in the next few days. I just want them to develop a little bit further in the egg hatchery and then I'll pop them into the main tank for them to grow out. In next week's video, we're going to be doing a fish room tour and it's on a fish room that I believe is the cleanest fish room in all of Sydney. It's definitely the cleanest fish room I've ever seen and I'm sure once you see this fish room, you're going to agree with me. Also, I'm sure you're going to be impressed with the aquascaping this guy has done in his fish room. I just can't believe how good all those tanks look and how different he's made them all look. Unlike my fish room where all the tanks kind of look the same, 
and you've just got a pile of grey slate with uh, pull filter sand. This guy's done really nice work on each individual tank to make each one look like a little different part of the world. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that video. Okay guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.